We are honored to once again be joined by State Assemblywoman Shivana Sumter. Good to see you, Shivana. Always good to see you, Steve. Assemblyman, let me ask you this. I kicked off the program. Um, people just heard Senator O'Scanlan finish the sentence when I said New Jersey's economic future is, and he said, in peril or perilous, you say. I say New Jersey economic status for business is in progress. I believe we're making tremendous strides in working with our business community post the pandemic to help them thrive. We put together a great budget uh, with energy credits, uh, with tax relief uh, for not only our business community, but also for our homeowners, which we heard for, from for decades. So I'm encouraged um, and people I talk to in New Jersey are encouraged as well. Let, let me try this. And, and I said this with Senator O'Scanlan. I, I referenced an interview we did with Governor Murphy. And again, people check out our website. You'll see it on the screen, steveadabato.org for that interview. And I asked the governor about people leaving the state, affordability. And I said, you know, we have our income tax is what it is. Florida does not have an income tax. If you're out of the state for six months uh, and a day, you don't pay income tax in New Jersey. Is my question. And the governor said, no, people aren't leaving the state. What do you believe, Assemblywoman, as it relates to the affordability issue in New Jersey and how many, as I look at the numbers, how many people, particularly higher income folks, are leaving and we're losing that revenue in income tax? Go ahead, please. So, so Steve, I think a, a couple of things. Um, we put in place the anchor program, uh, and I'd like to talk a little bit about that because it's not please. getting enough press. Uh, that's a $2 billion property tax relief, the largest in New Jersey's history. So we heard from our constituents across the state, including affordable housing being a priority. We invested in those spaces. We also have done 1.1 million homeowners will experience relief, but you have to take an action step. You actually have to apply. You have to complete the the application for the New Jersey Anchor Program for a check in May of 2023, because we lost the salt reduction uh, through the a- state and local tax deduction on the federal end. It's now capped at $10,000. Check that out. Pick up your point, please, Assemblywoman. Sure. So uh, with the salt uh, deduction being it's minimized- gone. Right, gone. $10,000 used to be upwards of $80,000. We had to hear from New Jerseyans as a state legislature on what we could do. So putting $2 billion in a property tax relief uh, program, which is an actual check for homeowners, was what we've done. We've also made uh, tax holidays. We did a school tax break. So if you purchased any items for uh, school, going back to school, which usually costs a family on average about $500, uh, this was a savings for you. We looked at very practical kitchen table issues, and people often said, what does that mean? We're combating hunger. You know the speaker uh, was adamant about fighting hunger. Speaker Coughlin, go ahead. He, speaker uh, Craig Coughlin uh, and the legislature, bipartisan, supported that effort because not only uh, were low-wage earners suffering from food insecurities, it also hit those middle-income earners who did not go back to the same jobs that they had pre-pandemic for whatever the reason. Another piece I have to elevate is mental health services. We learned post-pandemic. I'm sorry, as you're talking about this, sorry for interrupting this, Sam, yes. these issues of mental health and food insecurity, please help our viewers understand and listeners on the public radio side, help them understand what that has to do with, quote, New Jersey's economic future. Someone might say, well, that's not an economic issue, but I know you see it differently. Please. Absolutely. When, when you do not have food to put on your table, it is an economic issue. When the price of food due to inflation has gone up uh, and you talk about bread and the cost of eggs uh, that are now expensive, purchasing protein items, fresh vegetables, cost prohibitive for some folks and limited, it hits the pocketbook directly. And this is an economic issue. When you talk about not having access to health care, uh, because you're hungry, you're tired, you're fatigued, you're depressed, you're anxious, because you can't take care of your family, these things are very real. Going back into the workplace has caused anxiety for some folks. We must understand that, let alone kids being back in school and suffering from mental illness, social anxiety at a higher rate than ever in our history, all matter 
all part of an ecosystem that requires investments. And that's why I wage that as part of what we're facing and combating as economic crises in the state of New Jersey and trying to address and do it better uh, than some states as far as where we put our dollars uh, that were smart for the health and wellness. Because a healthy worker, right, has more productivity uh, when showing up to work. Uh, and you also can look at right. more outcomes for your business in that regard. But along the assemblyman's point, as we put up the graphic for our reimagined child care initiative, the assemblywoman has participated in that discussion. She's a leader in this field as well and, and her other work outside the legislature. Child care, affordable, accessible, quality child care is in fact an economic issue. Yes. That's not a that's not a position I'm taking. That's just a fact, is it not? It, it is a fact. And we did a $500 tax credit for parents uh, with a household income of $30,000 or less uh, for children under age six. Uh, some parents have to make the decision, is it worth it for me to go back to work or pay for child care because of the expense? If you don't have a loved one who's able to stay home and care for that child, it's a necessity a basic need um, that we in New Jersey, we recognize as an expense. So as a legislature, uh, having a surplus due to ARP funnies, American Rescue uh, Plan monies, we wanted to be sure that we heard from our constituents, from New Jerseyans, what their needs were and where we could, we wanted to provide some relief. And we think that was important. Real, real quick on this, you mentioned homeowners before as it relates to homeowner relief in terms of property taxes with the anchor tax program. But I also want to be clear, and people can look at the website to find out exactly what the specs, if you will, are, because their income level, certain people are eligible, certain people are not. But renters, if I'm yes. not mistaken, are included as well, correct? For the first time ever, renters are also included with the $450 check uh, no later than May 2023. Uh, and again, it's over 900,000 renters in the state of New Jersey. So we were really down. cognizant of the impact uh, this direct infusion would have uh, for relief in some of the areas which can be expensive for economic relief for middle income and low wage earners. Last question on my end, small business, the impact of small business on small business in the last several years, these very challenging times. The economic future for small business is, please. So the economic future for small businesses is um, unlimited at this point. Uh, we've made investments in training opportunities for people to start businesses. We've also uh, did a tax holiday on some of the fees for professional licenses, which is also important. So if you wanted to go into private practice, I, I often uh, deviate to the medical uh, avenue because I work in that space. So if you want to set up your private practice, pay for your professional license, which can get costly, that's an expense that we waive so you can hang up your shingle and go into practice, even as a lawyer, as a CPA, et cetera. We want to make it uh, so people can earn and work in the state of New Jersey. But real quick, before I let you go, Sam, when there are businesses that are small businesses that are closing down in record numbers. So we we have we've heard that there are businesses that are closing. We've been working and through the legislative black caucus in full transparency and with hope. We've been working with the chambers of commerce to provide training opportunity so that they can learn how to restart their business business mentors uh, so that they can help them raise capital uh, as well as do whatever filings they need to register so we can do procurement opening up procurement with the state for small businesses and minority women owned and veterans businesses is also an avenue that gives me hope to a future for the business community to thrive, small business that is. As always, Assemblywoman, cannot thank you enough for joining us. Uh, all the best to you thank and you. your constituents and your family. Thank you, Assemblywoman. Thank you, take care. You got it, right back. So there you have it. You just heard from State Assemblywoman Shavanda Sumter. You heard previously from State Senator uh, Declan O'Scanlan. So, so let, me, let me ask you, Tom, ROI and Jay reports on this, analyze it all the time. The affordability issue really was very challenging and interesting. O'Scanlan was saying it's not affordable at all. Obviously, the Assemblywoman had a different view. But anecdotally, and I asked Governor Murphy about this in a previous interview I did with him, where he just didn't buy the statistics. And I was saying, anecdotally, I know people are leaving. He's like, no, 
That's just not true, Steve. What does the reporting and analysis at ROI and J tell us about not just affordability, but who the heck's staying and who's leaving? Look, if you want to talk about really rich people escaping New Jersey and the higher taxes to go to a lower tax issue. You're going to have that every day, every year, every state. I mean, that that isn't that isn't a surprise. That's the way it works. Um, overall, are people leaving in droves? Let's not get into the United Band Line studies, which have been debunked. Um, I think we're OK. Look, I'll point to two stats that came out just just last week as we're taping this. Um, you know, the state year to year we have done better than the other states in the Northeast as far as job creation and unemployment numbers. Are they great? Are they fabulous? Are they where everybody wants to be? No. But are we moving in sort of a right direction? We are. I, O'Scanlan says that we're in peril. I, I don't know that this is a perilous situation. I think it's somewhere in between. And I think the biggest thing that the business community would want from what I'm hearing, from what I'm reporting, is I don't want to say more truth and honesty and transparency, but a little bit more truth and honesty and transparency. Look, a big issue with the business community is the unemployment insurance trust fund, which was completely wiped out. And now it's on the backs of businesses to, re to refill it. That's something that they'd like to see a little help from the state from. And it's something that the state isn't going to help them with and refuses to say, hey, we're not going to do that. They but keep saying it's on the table. Tom, sorry for inter interrupting. Hold on. But the, New Jersey's economic future, and you're talking about the unemployment compensation fund, but there was a ton of money coming from the federal government into the state that's no longer happening. What the heck is going on tapping into that fund? Right. They could have used that to help fund, businesses. Sorry. Hey, look, they could have used that fund to help business a little bit more. And to be fair, the, the governor's office and the EDA will say, look, we gave out more grant programs than just about every state in the union. I can't tell you right or wrong, but it seems like there were, we're pretty, pretty high up on that list. Right. Um, did it make as someone who owns his own business, did it make a huge difference? No, not really. Um, but it sort of comes with the territory of being here, and people are going to have to figure out what what the value of that is. I mean, Murphy got killed for it when he said, if high taxes are your issue, this isn't the state for you. That was in the election. That was in the election, and, and it might be the most honest thing he ever said. And, and somewhere along the line, we have to sit here and say, this is the way our state is set up. This is the way our state is set up for business. It's not preventing companies from coming in. Uh, I'm going to give you two, Beijing and Gilead, which are, are massive national and international pharma type companies, have both decided to come here without incentives. So there are some people coming here. Uh, is it great? Could we have less taxes? Yes, but as, we, as long as we want home rule, you're not going to get it. I mean, there's a huge fundamental issue, and a, a check here and a check here isn't going to solve that problem. People have to decide whether they want this or not. For Tom Berger on the team at ROINJ and our State of Affairs team with our executive producer, Jackie Heyer, we came together and collaborated on this and, and check out ROINJ on a regular basis. I know I do, and I learn every time about some aspect of the economy and public policy in the state, a whole range of issues. Tom, I want to thank you again for, for being partners with us in this. All the best to the team at ROI. Always good. Happy holidays to everyone out there. You got it. I'm Steve Adubato. That's Tom Bergeron. We'll see you next time. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Hackensack Meridian Health, the Turrell Fund, supporting Reimagine Child Care, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, PSE&G, Kane University, the New Jersey Education Association, Choose New Jersey, the Northward Center, Community Food Bank of New Jersey, and by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State. And by Employers Association of New Jersey. Promotional support provided by NJ.com. And by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Nothing has ever been handed to me. I've had to work for it. On the field. And off the field. Kane worked with me, guided me, helped me climb higher, to get where I belong, to change my life. Hey, welcome to the team. Cougars climb higher. Kane University.